Well, we will start talking today about uh, I-18N and L-10N, internationalization and localization. And we, our talk will be focused in three big principles. Sad talk, sad talk, and even more sad talk. Yeah? Uh, well, talking about the principles of the web, before I say something, I have to say hello to everybody. Hello, Moscow. Well, uh, someone told me to say, when I drink some water, Nazdrovia too, Nazdrovia. And because we are talking about internationalization, I have to say hello in different languages. Hola, hola too, in Portuguese. And how you say it? Privet. Privet. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, cool. Well, I introduced myself. Uh, they already introduced me, but uh, I'm working in the architecture department on a financial industry. My main job is just take your money every month when you have your paycheck. I also hang out with people from TC39 that try to build a better future of, for our JavaScript. Also, I love open source. And uh, in my spare time, also, I'm a teacher at uh, Barcelona Tech School. Our topic of today, it's a very important topic because it happens that we live in a place, in a globe, that we call Hurt. We have different countries, we have different people, and we have different languages. And what I pretend in, with this talk is show you not just the code, but to get you to invest in internationalization. Well, we have around 195 countries, and we have around 6,000 languages. And this is a real problem. And also, we have another big problem. We are speaking English here. We are not speaking Russian. We have an internationalization problem. Should everybody understand this talk? Some people that under don't understand English are not allowed to assist this talk because they don't just understand. Was the main reason that internationalization was invented? To make easier to people understand the content of your software, not just web. Well, I18N, yeah, it's more difficult to say than internationalization. And, of course, guess what? The 18 is just the number of characters that separate the first I from the last N. I18N, internationalization. I don't know how to say in Russian, but um, I, if someone uh, could help me, how you say I18N in Russian? But just the, 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 the small one, I-18N? Oh, it's even more difficult than in English. Well, I will explain with is I-18N or internationalization from now on. I have the, the, the horrible explanation, but here, the, the shortcuts. Well, it's just designing and preparing your software and take out all the barriers to people to understand it and enable your software also to support the local, the regional, the currency of the country that you want to expose your code. And just easy words, prepare the web to be more understandable by everybody. Just preparing your software to make, uh, to be translated, to be prepared, to be understandable by everybody. It's like when you do t uh, test driven development. Anybody do test read the TDD here? You are telling the truth? You write first the test and after the code? Yeah, we do the same with inter internationalization. Normally, we just start internationalizing our content after we already build it. This is the wrong part, because sometimes you have more problems when we already finished our web project, and now, oh, we have to support another language. This is very, 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 very confused normally. Well, we have the L10N. Guess what? Localization. Imagine. Ten characters between the first and the end. And, of course, we have the good explanation. Localization is to adapt your product to meet the language and the specific cultural 
targets. What, ha what means this? It's not just translate the hello to Privyat. It's also make it a little bit more understandable with the currency, with the, um, the decimal signs, with everything that makes your software more familiar. We need to make not just a pure translation. We need to make your content familiar to everybody. Because sometimes the pure translation doesn't work. You need to have the familiarity with the software you are uh, using. Well, I have a few questions. How many languages do you support on your web projects? Two? More than five? Oh, good, good, good. Fifteen? Oh my gosh. Okay, I support around 25. We are not supporting it very well. Oh, you support? Oh, we are colleagues or? <laughs> well, um, we are supporting around 25 languages. We are not supporting well because also we are not doing a good job on internationalization. We are just almost faking it. But yeah, I will explain you through the, through the talk how we can improve and get better and what we are doing to get better too. Summing up these two big factors, internationalization and localization are just tied together. Interna uh, interna localization, internationalization sorry, is just to open the door to be localized. It's just the facilitation and the support and all the architectural part to be internationalized. And localization is the part, the tweaks that you do to be um, present in different languages the cultural, the marketing, all linguistic adaptions. Well, we call it globalization. But today we will speak just about internationalization and localization. Well, um, sometimes we don't do the things in the right way because we just translate the things like they should be. Yeah? Do you think that pain and gain means the same that sweat, sugar, anabolic? Do you think this is the same meaning? Happens a lot on the movie industry. And do you think that if I'm walking on the street, I want to go to the Russian crematory? You think that is a way of attract clients like that? At, at least the alive clients, yeah? Um, yeah. I was trying to find a sauna and uh, someone says, oh, he's a crematory. No, no, I don't want to go. Well, why this is so important? Why is it so important be internationalized and localized? It's easy to share the correct message. Do not say to the guy, we are a crematorium. No, we are just a sauna. Okay? This one was easier, but anyway. What is the impact of have internationalization? I call it, it accessibility, because if you don't understand, you are almost disabled because it's a kind of blindness. Sorry, the people that suffer from these disabilities. But if I don't understand, I feel like I cannot do. Yeah? And if I understand, and if you make your web more accessible, we all win because we will have a wider audience, better conversion, more money, money, money. And we are improving the web, helping the people, and making the things better for everybody. Well, let's look some code. Let's get started with the basic part. Well, before, we need to translate our strings, yeah? It's the basic case. When you start translation, we have our variable, and hello world is hello world, and all our text. But we have message format for that, yeah? In different languages, in C, in Java, pardon, we have message format. But what is message format? Well, um, in JavaScript, I don't know what it is. But uh, before we explain a little bit how other languages do, I will need to explain you some basic concepts. Unicode. Anybody heard about Unicode? Oh, guys. Well, we have the teeny, 
DFNAF alphabet in Unicode. Unicode is just a standard. But to understand it a little bit better, it's a standard that maps all characters in diff from different alphabets to be at the same place. I usually um, like to say that it's like playing chess. You can have different pieces of the same a piece of chess, and you know where they are placed on the chess board, yeah? It's very similar. It's just a mapping of the characters of different alphabets. And of course, we have the variations of the UT, UT, UTF format depending on the bytes, yeah? UTF-8, 3 bytes, UTF-16, 2, UTF-32 have 4 bytes. But the most common one that we use in our web is UTF-8. When you put the meta tag on top, to browser understand the characters, at least the special ones. And sometimes happens that we forget that, and we have a special character, and nobody understands what happened with your page. Together with Unicode, we have two more different things that are very important. Yeah, the CLDRs and ICU. Well, starting with first one, CLDRs is like a database, a database of language things, a database where we store all the alphabets, uh, where we store all the list of countries. We, we saw that we have around 195 countries. Imagine we need to store in CLDRs the list of 195 countries in, uh, in 6,000 languages. Of course, we don't have the 6,000 languages. It's a work in progress, the CLDR. We have the currencies, we have the countries, we have the formats, time zones. But it's an evolving standard and an evolving database because we updated. Even in last October, they updated with more and more and more data. And after, we have the ICU. Well, ICU is an open source project that what they do is trying to reflect that data from that huge database of words, of uh, numbers, of characters that represent uh, different kind of languages, and they try to expose as a methods with different languages, like uh, collation, normalization, formatters, and is the base of internationalization for different languages. In JavaScript, we are uh, using ICU as a base of our Intel API. We are just mirroring what ICU does to the browser and to the JavaScript. But it's very difficult because there is so many things to bring to the browser that it's uh, always working in progress. And we have the message format. Well, this slide is not the best one because I don't want to be the best one to to, to show what is the message format itself, but it's just, a it's just a format that has some special characteristics to you to map your key to a, your keyword to a message that you want to share with the people in a different language. You have some special cases that you can pass variables, you can pass uh, plurals, and you can um, the the message format API will already compute all the values and expose to the final string. But we will see this a little bit later, OK? Well, uh, I was talking about solutions. And some languages already solve this in some different ways. Well, anybody here does Android? We are all JavaScript guys. Oh, he does everything. Um, well, in Android, they have already the message format implemented in Java. And they use uh, their own formatting thing to write the strings. But they don't need any library to do it, because Android already doing it. You have also the case of iOS. They also have a very, very similar API of JavaScript, because at least they have LAT. And just have API, do you have your string, you send your interpolation, and you already translated, built in in the system. Well, and how about yes? How did they solve it? We didn't solve it. Not yet, OK? But we have lots of popular libraries that are trying to solve. And uh, just checking this image, I just put together 
the most popular ones and two that aren't so popular, that Fluent and FBT, Fluent from Mozilla and FBT from Facebook. And we have lots and lots and lots of downloads of these popular libraries. Um, imagine, do you think that we have actual use case to have message format and internationalization APIs on the browser? Yeah, we have almost 2 million weekly downloads of these libraries. This means that JavaScript developers really need internationalization, really need message format, really need the power of these libraries inside the browser. At least 2 million developers weekly are doing that. It's not me doing a loop over NPM install. It's real data, OK? Well, we're going to see quickly, quickly uh, some libraries like E18Next, that is one of the popular ones. Anybody using this one? Just one? Okay. Two? Okay. This is a very popular library that I like, but it's a popular library that also makes lots of adaptions in the way that uh, message format is, because they solve lots of problems that developer had and did not follow what ICU says strictly but they is uh, still being a cool library. And how they implement the message format has some cool things, like the nesting. You just can put some nested um, strings that you cannot put on the original ICU format. You can have um, some downsides, like for the plural parts, that in the original message format, you can have in the same string the same uh, accounter for the plural. Here, you can't. And we have the Intel message format that is one of the most popular. It by itself has more than 700 downloads weekly. This one is maintained for a, by a colleague, a long who, and it's very popular. Why? Because React Intel is built on top of it, okay? Meaning that everybody that using React probably end up with this library too. And this is maintained by a guy that also participates on ECMA 402. And, mean, uh, and because of that, he tries to follow the max of ICU standards. This is the library that is close to the possible or future standard, if one day will exist. Well, and the implementation is very, very, very similar of the original message format. Was the main reason that I didn't want to show what happened on the, that first slide here. You have almost the same message, and you can pass the variable, you can pass the plural that will tell uh, our message format that he needs to choose a plural. You just send the number, and you have photos, you have no photos, or you have X number of photos. Just easy like that. Well, before we start with the code, real code, or showing real code, um, I will show you something also that is being cool. The new kids on the block, the library made by Facebook and library made by Mozilla, they are moving, 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 moving very fast. This slide doesn't represent all the API, but these guys are doing a very, very good job. They are creating and they are filling all the gaps that we need as a developers for internationalization and localization. Excellent work. I, um, I also would like you to, to have a look at because it's excellent work they are doing and is a very good candidate probably for a future standardization. Guys from Facebook, I've been talking with uh, lots of people uh, lately because we, we are working on this. And I, I also met with people from Fluent, people from FBT on Facebook. And of course, Facebook did something that is very Facebookian because they did something incredible. They have their markup, they run on build time, and they extract like hash maps of the strings that can be also translated automatically. Uh, but for the regular developer, it's quite uh, not uh, at the scale of our uh, possibilities in most of the times. But this project is a very recent project, and they want to bring it uh, and integrate it with popular libraries like React, and probably uh, will be even, even, even more popular with, with the time. Well, we are talking about things that we cannot do in the browser. And as I said, we'll have a very sad talk, yeah, because we cannot do nothing. 
Without libraries, we cannot do nothing. But if I tell you that we can do something, message format, we should do it. We don't have it yet, but message format will solve if one day lands in the browser and should be the future, will solve these issues. Yeah, well, as I was saying, we are working on it. We are working on it. Uh, the status of our work is we are meeting with people to find stakeholders, to find ideas, to define a new message format, because the format is very old, the original one, and our needs as a web developers, as a JavaScript developers, also changed, evolved, and probably we need to think about a little bit better. And as I'm saying normally, if nobody did this during these last 10, 15 years, we can be careful to build it because we want to build it well and we want to build it in a way that people will use it easily, okay? It's a work in progress still. And wait, um, we actually have lots of internationalization and localization capabilities already built in in the browser. But of course, most of people doesn't know or doesn't use, yeah? You know about daytime format? Well, on daytime format, we are evolving and creating new and new APIs every, every, every year. Probably we don't need or we don't may need Moment, DateJS, DateFNS. Every, anyone here use Moment? You know that you are loading a l huge uh, set of data, probably without need, because we have time style. It was released a uh, few months ago, and now you can format your time, like short, medium, long, and full. You don't need Moment to do it. And you already saved a hundreds of kil kilobytes without having it. You have the full, uh, the date style full also that you can format the full date. We didn't have that. Yeah? And we have the format range. Now, when you have to do a website like a format range or to two date pickers to have a range of dates like in any reservation site, it's difficult to format this. Now, browser already have. You can format like that. And the best part is internationalize it. You can uh, do in Russian, you can do in English. You don't need to load extra data. You don't need to load extra libraries. You can do it like that directly on the browser. Relative time format, well, stage three, we have lots of good things here. Also, I took care of most of documentation part two on MDN. And if you want to help as well uh, to translate for Russian, to try to understand and to, to help people to, to, to get more into all the standards, I, I advise you if you want to give a help documenting in different languages and will have us uh, a, good, a good hand. Well, relative time format. You, uh, sometimes you need to create a counter or you need to create some uh, formatting of relative time. Well, it's easier. You now can format like that. In two days, yesterday, in two weeks, in two quarters, we have the possibility to do these kind of formatters that didn't exist on the web yet. You can format like that in two days, one day ago, three weeks ago, and everything will work perfectly. Just change the language, and I guess in Russian it's okay, no? Because I don't understand Russian, and I hope that CLDR is okay, and the message format is working, uh, um, and the API is working as it's supposed to. If not, just correct me, and I will let you guys know and open an issue to correct all, all this, okay? But you can try it in your browser, because it's already there. And we have also a way to format the style as an arrow. De dentro de 20 segundos is Portuguese, and in Russian I don't know how to say, but well, I'm uh, pretty sure that also it's a very, very, very good information. All these kind of details about internationalization are already landed on the browser, meaning that just use it. Don't use the library for do that. 
we have also the number format. Uh, I speak here about three, but I will show just the two because the last one we've been discussing some changes on that. Well, the unit and notation. The first one, why we need unit? Well, the unit will be one of the best things because now we can format using different different kind of uh, style. I will show you the code. If you choose the style unit, you now can format different kind of units. Yeah, uh, All the units are um, based on the unit technical standard 35 that has uh, a huge amount of units. Liters, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, and are around 140 different kind of formatters units to format, meaning that now it's even more easier to be internationalized. Yeah? You just need to translate your string and all the rest that is, uh, let's say, uh, dynamic, it's already on the browser. Well, we have the notation. For me, I actually, I don't use too much because I don't write so many big, big numbers or scientific notation or engineering notation, but for those that uh, needs this kind of numbers, this kind of internationalization, you already have the API that can help you to deal with that, okay? And talking about list format that is already stage three, is also a very useful API because we'll format your lists in two different ways. The first one, imagine I'm trying to build a phrase. I'm attending at HolyGS. Well, I have an array with St. Petersburg and Moscow. If I'm doing list format with conjunction, I will join all the param parameters on the list, and the phrase will be, I'm attending at Holy GS, Moscow, and St. Petersburg. Something that is very, very new. This is rad. Well, we have also this disjunction that is separating the things. I'm attending at Holy GS, Moscow, or St. Petersburg. That is also a cool thing that we can do. And just have a look at this one. I'm attending at, if you want to format your list, he will automatically pick the kind of alphabet or the kind of language you are using and will order by you. Moscow, St. Petersburg, he will order it. You don't need to use to join or to separate the sentence. You can just use it to order, like sort your lists to. We have plural rules. Yeah, plural rules are the oldest ones, but nobody used that. Yeah? Other day I was watching the Formula One, and um, also I, when I su see the, the classification on soccer, I always see one, two, three, no, it's first, second, third, yeah? Because we say like that. Why developers don't use the APIs to just iterate and do the plurals in the correct way? It's not so difficult, yeah? Like with cats, yeah? We have one cat. We have zero cats. We have 0 0.5 cats. We have 1.5 cats. Yeah, it's easy like that. Well, I spoke yesterday um, about display names. And there is a mistake on this slide because it's already stage three. This is one of most favorite APIs. And why? Because this use case is fantastic. How many of you has a list of countries to display? And how you do it? I have it on a database, I, or I have a JSON with these countries. And every time I change uh, my language, I have to load a different JSON with the list of countries, with the list of currencies. And I end up with the lots of JSONs. And after what I did, a microservice that has a database with different languages and someone needs to update, we are lucky because we don't have <laughs> much changes on that. But of course, we are not covering everything. Well, display names is already covering a lot of this for you. 
you have just this API and you just can bring the currency or you can bring just a list of countries. This is something that we really needed. And after, you can not just bring currency or countries, you can bring months, you, you can bring weekdays, you can bring lots of things that are useful for the final developer. Well, we are talking about some APIs that we have. Let's now talk about our future. We've been speaking about Intel APIs, we've been speaking about the need of have internationalization on our apps because it's mandatory to have. Um, let's speak about the future. I was just, before the talk, I was having a little chat and one of main reasons to be in Russia having this talk is because every time or most of the times you do a website, you have at least to support two languages. Happened the same with me. I'm a native Portuguese speaker. When I do a website in Portuguese, I have to support at least Portuguese and English. And in my case, Spain is our neighbor. I need to support Spain too. And happens that we are so tiny that France is so close that we need to support French too. And we then up ending up supporting lots of different languages. And we end up needing software to do it. Is the reason that we should do message format. And I was saying that we were working on that. It's nothing official, but we are trying to make it. And yeah, should happen. Should happen soon, because we really need it. And as I was saying, it's a greenfield. Nobody did that, nothing. We have libraries, we have some uh, people that are trying to implement, and the good thing that these people are all together. Most of the popular libraries, most of the popular companies, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, I've been talking with them because they all agree in one thing at least. We need this. These big companies agree on that and two million downloads weekly are saying that we really need this. We have a use case of this. And now we have time. We should review the needs of the message format to rebuild it once and to rebuild it, it very, 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 very well. Well, um, talking about impact, if we have it, if we have a good internationalization and good APIs on the no in our browser, who will benefit? All the web universe. The web universe, the companies, the projects, the libraries will benefit of that. Probably libraries like uh, Intel message format will exist, but will exist in a different way. They don't need to load the data because the data will be in the browser. Probably you won't need to migrate to a different library. You're still using the same library, but you will save data because browser will have it. And actually some of these libraries are already working as a polyfills for some implementations. Some of the implementations we saw during the presentation are in stage three, aren't implemented in all navigators, in all the browsers, but libraries like Intel Message Format sometimes provides the polyfills for these functionalities already. Let's have it on the browser. And having this, we are opening a new chapter. Yeah, it's like a revolution for a web for an internationalized web, a web that everybody can understand, a web that everybody can read, a web that can be shared with everybody. And this is very important. And of course, we are doing a better and a more international web for everybody, as I was saying before. Well, um, another cool thing, and you need to focus a lot on that, is we should be unique. And uh, I will share some personal dreams uh, are not part of the message format. But just let's think like this. If we have a unique format that we use on C, we use on Java, use on JavaScript, why we cannot use it everywhere? Imagine have a unique API that can be used, a unique format that can be used all around. Because when you do web, 
Sometimes you need to do mobile too. And you are doing again, again, and again. Why not just reuse the resources, the APIs, and everything we are doing in all platforms? I spoke this with some guys from Amazon and they went crazy. We should do this. Of course, they have lots of devices, yeah? Um, we need to integrate better with the tools because it's not a matter of um, having developers doing internationalization. Internationalization is more than that, yeah? Make it pluggable, modular, because sometimes you want to use your formatters, you want to use your own code. Don't close the API. Let the API open to people to just plug in their things they want. And the other thing is make it native. I was telling at the beginning that it's all about data. CLDRs are the data that feeds the internationalization API. If we have a system like uh, Mac OS, like Windows, we are loading already data from CLDR. CLDR is a unique repository. Why just not load once the data and share across all the software in our operative system? This is quite a crazy idea, but have some logic. If you already have loaded in, our, in your operative system all the data to feed the Intel API, why not share across all your software? Yeah, probably. And um, experience, because we are not alone. We are developers, but we are not translators. And sometimes the biggest problem that happens is we do the string and the translation, and we send to a company that translates our strings. But the translator doesn't have the context, because also message format is missing that. Don't have the context of translation. And sometimes the things go wrong. Yeah? Pain and gain, anabolic, or sweat sugar anabolic, or just uh, a crematorium, yeah? Something sometimes can get wrong on that. And in my opinion, also, the API should, as, should be so easy to use that everybody can internationalize their content. Shouldn't be a thing that you need to worry too much about. Should be a thing that you think from the beginning, like the TDD. You do first the test, and after you do the program. OK, let's do like that. We start our web project, but we start our web project using internationalization and localization in the right way. And when we end up our development, we have a website that will fit everybody. Well, um, I would like to say thank you for for um, for being here if you want to download slides we already have um online and is that all right we have so many questions yeah um, ready yeah cool. do you want to sit or oh. maybe we can stand yeah we can yeah. sit and um you know you mentioned you mentioned tdd yeah and uh, yeah, we all know that TDD is super cool and we have to do that, but no one actually do that yeah. because it, it gives you a lot of uh, overhead. So what do you think? Developing with the I18N uh, or localization um, like from the beginning, is it hard? Actually, at this moment, it's a, uh, it's a hard thing because uh, normally we think uh, about localization and internationalization in the last place. Normally, because we have pressure from our bosses or we need to deliver a project, we just do it. And after, someone says, oh, but we need the project in English too and Spanish too. And OK, we hack around the project to internationalize. And sometimes we need to do so many changes in our projects that we are doing kind of Frankenstein thing, yeah? yeah. Just yeah. to fit a different language. Yeah, yeah but, but uh, developing it from the beginning, it gives you some overhead and uh, sometimes your boss uh, uh, saying to you that hey we don't have so much time we don't need it don't need it right now so pff, don't do yeah, that. Yeah it's because we don't have the APIs already in the browser. Yeah. We have to just load libraries. First of all we need to choose a library. We have lots of different libraries that does the same job. Yeah. Um, of course 
having to choose a library uh, is already a uh, delay. Because if you had already in the browser, you will use it directly, like relative time format you can use. Probably you don't need to load moment. Now the guys already know that at least for formatting dates, they have all the APIs they need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the biggest problem with the natural languages, I don't know, Russian, Arabic, doesn't matter. Uh, they are full of uh, exceptions, corner cases, some, some weird stuff. And uh, of course, I, I think that uh, would Th this kind of libraries will have a lot of fixes and bugs and other things. And what do you think? So uh, we will uh, have, I don't know, browser updates every hour because uh, fixing this no, stuff? No, uh, the thing is uh, the language doesn't change too much. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and we have the CLDRs that are the repository of languages that are updated time to time, but are not so frequent updates. Uh, we have lots of edge cases because some countries has 13 months, some countries start the first weekday, is not a uh, Monday, is Sunday, or is a different day. And these particularities is the hardest part of the APIs, yeah? Yeah, and uh, for example, in Russia, we, I don't know, five years ago, we had um, summertime, then uh, one of the guys from the government, uh, he actually cancelled it. So we don't have uh, summer or winter time. Then it moved back. And it's a big problem with the browser because you have to support this. Yeah, but we, all, as I'm saying, we have already data for the time zones. And uh, it's easier if the data is in the browser, the API is built for that. But of course, some corner cases, you need to update the API. But in that case, it wasn't needed. But yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of cases that are not uh, JavaScript related, yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, what do you think? How does and will API support languages which are not installed? So, for instance, uh, you want to use Portugal, and I don't don't have it on on my machine. Well, the the thing is, um, if you if you support it by the browser, the browser should load. The, the the languages all, all the languages all the languages browser already load lo not everything but uh, the enough data to support the APIs yeah and having this you already have it in different languages mm -hmm. and you will save your space or your API calls because you don't need to load the huge amount of data people that use popular libraries they should they normally has uh, the locales files that you have all the definition about your currency, about uh, uh, the, the decimal, and you have already this kind of list of the minimum requirements for each country. And uh, you should load that on these libraries. If you have it already on the browser, that you already have most of the things, you don't need it. Yeah, yeah for sure. But um, every API, the biggest problem with the browser API is that it's a black box for, black box for you. But what if you want to tweak it somehow, change something in this corner case in your specific language or so? The thing is, uh, we find corner case uh, sometimes because actually we are more developers than linguistics. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about internationalization, it's not just a matter of development, it's a matter of linguistic. And uh, of course, we are better developing than uh, <laughs> in the linguistic part. And when we find a corner case, we need to update, we need to, to study a lot. But because the JavaScript, the way that things goes, that takes quite long time, give you the space and the room to, um, to think about it. And we are very lucky because uh, we don't commit as much mistakes that we should as we should because people already did it in different languages already most of these use cases we are we are already prepared and we are learned with the mistakes of the others mm -hmm. um, it's very for, for, for at least for my company it's very common when you're developing software and you put some i don't know button string on on the button and in some language for instance we have some so problems so many problems you know, with Italian because it turns out Italian is is uh, like how to say it's big languages uh, language. So, what do you think? What uh, how to deal with this kind of situations when you have some text and it, it does not fit in in the box? And okay, it, we are there is an API that is it's a whip is stage stage two I believe segmenter 
that uh, will give you all the information about all line breaks, all about this kind of characters, and probably you can use it to at least measure the impact of a character. But yeah, it isn't easier. It's it's sometimes visual. It's uh, it's a button like with yeah. 300 yeah. pixels, yeah. and in on one language is just 100 pixels. This is uh, quite a little bit difficult to to prevent and is based on UI testing, but with Segmentary, at least you can have a relation of all the segments that you have in a phrase, as an example, and you can use as a reference to, yeah. as an example, exchange or, or, or change your UI. Yeah. And uh, there are some languages that are completely different from uh, Latin or, I don't know, Arabic or yeah. maybe Chinese, right to left, uh, maybe from top to bottom. Will we have some good API for, for that, because uh, these days it's, it's a pain in the ass to, to work with uh, these uh, languages. Actually, it's not a pain in the ass, let's say. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the guys in that home, sorry. Um, sometimes it's not about the API, it's about how we build our stuff, because sometimes we have r left to right, right to left, and um, it's not wrong. We just put the images in the wrong place or the buttons in the wrong place. It's not about the API. It's about how you, we build the things. Because it happened with me also with the, with the Arabic countries that we, our brain is prepared to read in one direction, to put the ima images in one direction. And when someone needs to translate this, just swap is not enough. Yeah. You, you need to prepare to to local, be localized. It. And localization isn't just a matter of software. It's a matter of uh, having people to be familiar with your content. Yeah. Software helps you, but also people that understand how the things work in the country is helpful too. Yeah, yeah for sure. And uh, the last question. So these days we have uh, so many things uh, with machine learning, Google Translate, uh, and other companies. So m what do you think? Maybe one day we will not, uh, we don't need this kind of uh, tools. So browser will translate to every language in the world like automatically. I also agree with you actually. Uh, but do you remember when we have that uh, bar of Google Translate yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. bothering you always saying, you want to translate this page, you want to translate this page? Sometimes the content wasn't even close from the original one, meaning that we still need some manual, um, manual context to translate well. And um, is the main reason that probably all the MDN, also documentation, it's normally manual translated, because we need to make it well, make it uh, with good context, and should make sense, yeah? Yeah, for sure. And if you have any, any questions to Romulo, you can ask uh, him in discussion zone. And thank you for your talk. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right.